Life Management Science Labs would like to acknowledge that we live and produce this podcast on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people. We'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands of our listeners and our international colleagues. We'd like to thank and pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Hi everyone and welcome to Room by Room, the Home Organisation Science Insights podcast. Produced by LMSL, the Life Management Science Labs, we are champions of life management science, providing structured insights informed by science and inspired by practice on key aspects of conscious living. Each week we bring you scientific and practical insights on each element, with expert knowledge from professionals in the field. I'm your host, Gabriella Yastra, coming to you from NAM, Melbourne, Australia. Let's get started. Hi everyone and welcome back to the podcast. Today we're going to be talking about good and bad habits related to sanitation management at home with Vivian Victor who is a sanitation and hygiene coordinator. Hi, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm good. What about you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you for joining us today. Um, Before we get started um, and talk about our topic today, I'd love to get to know you a bit better. Um, So do you mind introducing yourself so we get to know you? Yeah, sure. No problem. Uh, my name is Vivian Victor. I am the Sanitation Hygiene Coordinator at Life Water International. Uh, our focus is on solving the sanitation and sanitation hygiene and water challenges within Tanzania. Uh, Life Water has been doing this work for more than 40 years, but for the case of Tanzania, uh, this is its third year. And when talking about sanitation and hygiene, we have two teams here at Life Water, the engineering part and the community health team. The engineering part deals with the all constructions. And for the community health team, it's all about knowledge sharing and uh, trying to sensitize on practicing good sanitation and hygiene practices. When speaking about sanitation and hygiene, I've been working in this field for more than five years and the problems are the same when, because we are focused on the rural area. So when talking about rural area within Tanzania, the cases are the same as most, most of the households are being attached with the cultural practices of not believing in constructing latrines. So I have much more experience when speak, when talking about sanitation and hygiene. Yeah. Interesting. Um, it's so interesting, I guess, to think about, I guess, the role of infrastructure and also education. Yeah. Um, because I think, you know, where I live in Australia, um, I feel like the infrastructure is so inbuilt into uh, everyday life. So it's not really something that we think about. But of course, you can't. You can't be clean yeah. and sanitized without actually having the proper facilities. Sure. Uh, for the case here, it's quite different because uh, mm-hmm. you might find this school, but they don't have improved latrines at school, or they have few uh, holes, or I can say few latin blocks where students can go and uh, dispose their human waste. So, oh, you might find within the health facility, there is no, there, there are no latrines. So as an organization, we have to construct latrines uh, in schools and also health facilities. And when talking about the engineering parts, there are some places where there, there is no access to water. So mm. we have to drill, yes. There are points where we drill boreholes where people can access water. Because when talking about sanitation and hygiene, we're doing our part on sensitizing. But if there there is inadequate water supply, uh, I guess the people will prioritize to use that water, that insufficient water. In other cases, maybe bathing or to use the water in cooking and ignore washing their hands and also cleaning the latrine. So this these three go together: the sanitation, hygiene, and water. You can't accomplish one and leave the other two. So they go together. That's Mm. why we have engineering and we have the community health team. 
Great. Um, yeah, sounds like a very complex thing, and I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to learning more about this. But before sure, we do sure. um, learn more, we're going to do a section called "Have You Met Vivian," where we get to know yes. you. Um, yeah. So, uh, what is a movie that you've watched recently that you enjoyed? <laughs> I watched a movie called the Binti. Uh, mm-hmm. Binti. Binti is a Swahili word, which means you know here we speak Swahili language. Uh, it means girl uh it it's on netflix you can go and check it uh it's all about the lives of four different girls uh there is one girl who was facing gender-based violence it's it's very relevant to our lives here uh, or what girls are experiencing here in our country because they they there are it's it's a story of four girls the first one was facing gender violence, was being beaten by her husband, which is quite true uh, to some relationships here. Uh, and the, the other one was was facing, she had problems with conceiving and she had performed different IVFs, which is quite true to uh, in some marriages currently as some couples are facing different problems when it, when it comes to conceiving yeah and the other one was facing uh was unemployed so she was trying to do several businesses and sometimes she was she was facing uh disturbance from the revenue authority here it's called tra tanzania revenue authority they were disturbing her until she had to close the the business and the last girl uh, was she was married and she had kids, but her kid was very stubborn. She wanted to stay only with her mom, so she had to quit job, which is true. Some some women here, uh, when they are employed and when they start families, they, sometimes they have to quit jobs so that they can take care of their kids, as it's it's. Uh, it's known all uh, in our tradition that women, our roles, when speaking on gender roles, our role is to take care of the family. So there are some women or girls, they have to quit their jobs so that they can take care of the family. So uh, that movie really catched my attention because it's, uh, it spoke the truth of what we are experiencing here as African women. Okay, that yeah. sounds like a good movie. And yeah, I think that's something that we need to think about a bit more is, yeah, I guess, you know, what is our um, roles and, you know, what limits us, but also how can we overcome it? I hope maybe they um, look at that as well. Um, so what was the yeah, name no. of the movie again? Binti. How Binti. do you spell that, please? B-I-N-T-I. Okay, that's pretty easy. Yeah. Okay, I'll but, have to look it up. Yeah, I think you are on your side. You are lucky. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. I think I, I think the gender roles they are not uh, very practical to your side. Like maybe you are supposed to take care of the family and stay at home, or even if it's a place, uh, you know, uh, it's developed countries whereby you can use washing machines, you have dishwashers. But for our case, we have to use our hands to wash the clothes. <laughs> you have to mm. use your hands to wash the dishes. Yeah, so it's quite different. Yeah, <laughs> and I think, yeah, interesting, because I've never, yeah. I mean, I, I wash my own dishes, but I haven't had ever had to wash my own clothes, and it, it's so <laughs> annoying to have to do. <laughs> uh, practically, when me, I'm washing my hands, you, I'm washing my clothes using my hands. <laughs> mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the washing machines are quite expensive, so mm. not everyone can can afford them. Uh, and despite that, you can afford, but they use a lot of electricity. You have to use water, and electricity is quite expensive. Yeah, so mm. you have to opt to use your hands. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, how do you define home organization? Uh, home organization, I think it's all about putting all things into what order and it includes the cleanliness, cleanliness, 
and putting away the waste after cleaning in a proper place. Um, I think home, home organization is really important to our case. First, it saves time. You know, if your home is disorganized, you'll spend much time looking for staffs. Well, the staffs are there, but you, you maybe you're looking for a certain clothes in the wardrobe. You have to move, uh, go along the whole the whole wardrobe while the if your home could be maybe organized you could spend less than a minute and find the thing which you're looking for but also home organization can save money and resources you know if your home is disorganized you can you will have to buy new items new missing items where the item is there so quite it serves resources and time. That's how I can define home organization. It's all about putting all things into order. Yeah. Mm. And what are some misconceptions about home organization? Uh, the misconceptions about home organization practice, practical for our case. Uh, first, for instance, for instance, there are some households in the rural area they think that cleaning, because I said home organization include cleaning, they think that cleaning the compound, they're sweeping away the wealth. So they normal, it's the tradition. <laughs> so they normal, you might go to the field and visit the household, you find the compounds quite dirty. And when you ask them, they are, they are fearing that if they sweep, they will, they will be sweeping away their wealth. So we had to convince them and lie a bit that maybe you can be, you can, <laughs> you sweep when the, the waste is throw them in the farm because uh, the, the, can, the project area is based on the Sukuma land and the most wealth of the Sukumas is crops and, and cows. So we said that they, if they sweep and take the waste to the farm, so the wealth will, will transform to the, to the farm. Yeah, and the second misconception is some people think that home organization applies to people who don't have busy schedules. Uh, practical to the field, you might find, you might visit a household and you find the things are disorganized, the compound is dirty, and the person might say that I was very busy, I went to the farm and I just came back, I started cooking. So they don't prioritize the home organization thinking that it applies to people with no busy schedules, but that's not true. It applies to all of the people. You can sacrifice the little time you have and do the home organization. Mm. As yeah. you said, um, home organization actually saves time. So if you're yes. busy, um, you're probably yeah. spending more time trying to fix everything afterwards. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> sure. So you mentioned previously um, WASH, which was a, a water sanitation and hygiene. And hygiene, do you mind, yeah. hygiene. Do you mind explaining that a little bit more? Um, why, what is WASH and why, why should we care? Ah, okay, yes. First, WASH. WASH stands for the stand for three words, which are water, sanitation, and hygiene. All all of these these are interdependence, and they depend on each other. Uh, when speaking of, you can't say you have accomplished WASH. You you have accomplished water supply and leave behind the hygiene and sanitation parts. Because when talking about the sanitation, it's all about safe. Uh, dispose of human waste and even it includes the solid waste management but when talking about hygiene it's all about the uh, personal cleanliness which can help you to prevent yourself from diseases uh, and it goes uh, from washing your hands to even brushing your teeth so this is very quite uh, quite important in our daily life as first uh, it helps to prevent the uh, getting infectious diseases such as like cholera and diarrhea, yes, and typhoid. Because if you are 
if maybe you have not washed your hands after using the latrine and you have gone to maybe you are and and touch maybe and start eating maybe uh, your sweet potatoes or any fruits and you have not washed your hands so you'll be welcoming diseases like cholera because the as you know feces can can have some uh there will be some bacteria or viruses which will transform from the um, from your hands to the fruit or to the food which you are eating that's why it's really important to to practice good sanitation hygiene behaviors but also uh when talking about practicing good sanitation hygiene behaviors it helps to it it gives, I can say it gives comfortability or it improves the mental health. <laughs> if you are living in a dirty compound or dirty environment, you, you, you won't be comfortable because there will be some bad smells which will, which will not be comfortable to, to live. But if it's a clean environment, you'll have a sense of relax, relaxation and comfortability. Yes, and the third thing is uh, wash can help us even to practicing good sanitation and hygiene behaviors can help us to to remove the bad smells. Yes, if, you, if everything is tidy, there'll be no bad smell and there'll be no pests pests like cockroaches which can can contaminate your food or can damage your properties in your household so this is quite very important and wash can also can also increase productivity you know if a person is sick maybe if you are sick you'll spend much more time visiting the hospital uh, while if you practice good sanitation and hygiene behavior, you'll use much more time in the office or in school, which can increase productivity and even can, can it lead to economic growth of your country. <laughs> yeah. So wash isn't just important for, for ourselves, but it's also important to, yeah, help, help with the entire um, economy and the government and the country. Amazing. Sure, sure. Even for the case of, like, for the country, it's really important, yeah. Because if mm. a person spends much more time visiting the hospital, means the productivity will slip here. But if the person is healthy and attends the full time, you will have time because we normal pay you we normal pay taxes so the government will 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 get its tax from you <laughs> we normal pay <laughs> pay as you earn <laughs> so the government will have revenue <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so keep clean so you can pay your taxes <laughs> <laughs> sure sure so you mentioned that um uh, yeah, we, we need to have good sanitation practices for many different reasons. Yes. But what what specific sanitation practices should be should we, you know, be working on? What what do we need to learn in that regards? Ah, uh, okay. For instance, for uh, for our case as life water, we have a thing called health on. Uh, mm -hmm. we we are sensitizing and uh, until a home is called health home is until it has improved latrine mm -hmm. and it's not just a latrine it's improved with the walls uh door uh, and it should, have, it should have a roof and also it there should be uh tippy taps or i can say hand washing stations near the latrine whereby a person can when finishing using when has finished using the latrine you can visit the hand washing station and wash your hands but also there is hand washing station near the kitchen whereby before cooking you need to wash your hands <laughs> yeah and also the third thing is uh drinking safe water whereby we normally say that every person should they should boil their their water or yes they should boil their water before drinking uh and the other thing is the the compound should have bathing shelter whereby a person can wash their bodies after their daily activities. And the other thing is drying luck, whereby the ruler 
area, no more people cannot afford having the carpets for keeping their dishes. So we normally tell them to make drying work. It's normally pressed outside, uh, whereby after washing their dishes, they can place their their dishes and they they can be dried by the sun. That's why it's called drying luck. It's the rack whereby dish, <laughs> dishes can be dried there. And the other thing is clean compound. Yes, mm. whereby a person should have a clean compound. So if, if a person follows all these steps, uh, that person has practiced good sanitation hygiene behaviors. Yes, I, I, have, I had forgotten one, rubbish pits. <laughs> mm -hmm. whereby after using the uh, maybe you, whereby you can place your solid waste plastics papers uh, bottles yeah the we normal sense is also the household should have rubbish bits rubbish should should not loiter on the compound after sweeping they normally keep it, keep them in the rubbish pit so if we follow all these steps that household will be perfect yeah, because it covers all, all the parts of wash. <laughs> and that's where when we find the household has, has all, all the six or five criteria, we normally registered it and mm. placed a sticker, health home sticker. Yeah. Ah, great. I have a few questions yeah. about yeah. that. So uh, you, you said that like some plastics and those types of things, yeah. they go into the um, rubbish, into the rubbish Hole? Rubbish tip? pit, rubbish pit. Pit, pit. Um, so does that include things like food scraps? What, or what do you recommend people do with food scraps? Uh, I think it's very, very important. Uh, the leftovers of food should be kept in the rubbish pit because these plastics and papers can be burnt. Mm -hmm. Yes, can be burnt and the the leftovers can be kept in the rubbish pits. Yeah, okay. but for the case of maybe food leftovers, it's very good. Oh, it's yes, it's great to be kept in the rubbish pits. Okay. Yes, yes. So if you don't eat them, we got to put them in the rubbish pit. Can't keep them around. <laughs> yeah, and for a case of the rural area, uh, most of the people can't, uh, can, they don't even use much of the plastic or much of the, yes, plastic or papers. So they normally keep their leftovers from food in the rubbish pits. So um, once you've, you know, um, said that a home is all, all good, um, yeah. then you move on to the next one? Yes. Because mm -hmm. what we normally do is sensitizing to the whole, whole community. Then uh -huh. we have our, yes, we have our facilitators who go around because for our case, we are very few. We, we can't uh, visit. We have almost like 4,000 household and we are only like six in our team. We can't oh, wow. visit, we can't visit all of the 4,000. So after mass sensitization, whereby we had community gatherings, where we put the task on the shoulders of the facilitators who are the, they are just local, local volunteers, whereby they, they move around the household every day. They monitor every day. Yeah, and if the household has accomplished all of the criteria, they normally tell us and we visit the household to verify if it's true or they are just lying. So after that, that's where we put the stickers. Yeah, and, and, and the criteria for selecting these uh, volunteers, uh, it's first for them to change. It was the first cr criteria because you can't be the change maker if you, you have no the criteria for your case. So we had to uh, tell them they first have to change themselves so that they can even change the others. And they are very, they have been very active and they have been very helpful to us because first they are from the local, local community, because it's not easy for a person who doesn't know you to listen to you. So that's where participation comes, you know, we have to, as a project, we have to involve the, all of the stakeholders. So that's where they have been very helpful. And they even understand the, because they come from the, from the 
local area they have even their local language it's it is very easy for them to understand each other and take the actions which is needed so mm. it has been very easy yeah it's very it's it's quite good to involve them mm. to so involve i guess the it's local not just people. Oh. Mm. It's not just you coming along and saying, this is how you yeah. have to do it. This yes. is what you need to do. It's about involving yeah. the community and yes. explaining to them and getting the community, I guess, to help themselves. Yes, yes. Mm. For It's it's good even for the sustainability because uh, we, we can do, we can do it. Maybe we can even organize ourselves and construct all the criteria, but there will be no sustainability uh, because there are some items like the end ocean station because the, we normally tell them to just use you, you know the misconce misconception on sanitation that it's expensive so we told them to use the local available materials such as the water gallons they can use it for washing their hands after the use of, of the toilet so these are not permanent they're not they are just temporary items when it comes to the rain or heavy winds they are normally damaged for instance the roof they are normally taken away by the by the wind. If we had constructed for them, they they would just call us. Oh, your roof is gone. So come and do <laughs> make the new one. But because they have done it there themselves, there is sustainability and ownership of the items which have been made. So it's very good to involve them for the case of sustainability, as we we know, the the projects are time time bound. Uh, for us, it's only for three years. So if we do for them, when we leave or we, when we have with, withdrawn our our hands there, they, they, there will be no ownership, there will be no sustainability of the things which we have, we have done. So if they do themselves, they'll have the, uh, the ownership of the things which have been made. Yeah, so we normally say, say studies, maybe you do the construction in schools, and health facilities but for the case of household we normally stay so that everyone can can have the passion and commitment to change his or her behavior because if we can be constructed to it constructing for them to be like forcing them and they won't be willing so it's until a person uh, will you convince a person until he's willing to do it by he, him him himself or herself for the case of sustainability and yeah. how do you go about, you know, convincing them? Is it just, you know, educating them and making sure they understand why? Or is there more involved? Uh, it's more involved. There is a sanitation approach called CLTS. Uh, in long form, it's called community-led total sanitation, whereby it's based on three pillars. Uh, you, you trigger them until they say ah we, we will construct latrines because we you connect the dots on how if a person defecates in the in the field that uh, when it rains that feces will be taken in water points uh, water sources and when a person goes to fetch the water source from the water sources uh, he will he will he or she will drink the water which is contaminated so we, you just connect it like that so that they can feel the, the shame uh, and even uh, feeling like we want we want to construct rations. We have been eating feces. Yeah. And even you connect uh, to the point whereby even when a person uh, defecates in the field, a house fire can, can touch the feces and then comes to your food and you eat the feces of someone through the house fire. Yeah. So we normally have yeah at the beginning of the project we normally use that uh partic it's a participatory approach on sanitation called community-led total sanitation whereby a community itself uh thinks and and willingly to change their behaviors so after that that's where uh for our case we train the wash facilitators and they start visiting the household but we also have the community conversations whereby we normally have conversations with communities. Uh, Mathry, we normally select one one sub village and talk to them about on the challenging criteria because there there were some places where by the challenging criteria was the latrine whereby 
uh, some cases where they have been bound with the bad cultural practices that a father cannot share a latrine with the with the daughter. So we, yes, so you might find a, a household have accomplished every criteria except for the case of the latrine. So we have to convince them that it's no, it uh, there is no big deal of sharing the latrine until they they accept. Yeah. So we normally also have the conversation and we have daily monitoring, which is done by the wash facilitators. Yes. So we have we have imposed many approaches. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds very involved. Um... So you said that you've been working on this project for almost three years now. Yes, yes. And, um, and you know, you've said that, you know, um, these practices, they can really help people with productivity, with their health. Um, yeah. Have you seen that in the community yourself? Yeah. Have you uh, seen an improvement? Yes, there's an improvement. Because I was, I was talking to the clinical officer, he told mm -hmm. me even the cholera cases have reduced. In, Amazing. Uh, yes, has, have reduced because when we were doing the baseline, there are only one percent out of the four thousand four hundred and eleven. Only one percent had improved latrine, and when we're, when we as we are talking right now, we have eighty seven percent of wow. the improved latrines. Yeah. So as you can see, uh, as I was talking to the clinic officer, he's saying we have done a, a big job, but we have not done it ourselves at the organization. Even the community members themselves have done a big job. Yeah. And uh, in addition, there is a quite difference. Even, even when we are moving around the fields, we can see many households have latrines. It's practical, not even uh, we are maybe we are cooking the data. No, practical. <laughs> uh, most of the households have uh, the latrines. They have the hand washing stations outside their their house the, near the latrines. And the good thing is, we we had we have twelve villages. And out of the 12 villages, there is a thing called open verification, free verification, which is done in two phases, whereby uh, out of 12, four villages have already been certified as they are open verification. They have open verification free status. So it's a quite, yes. And then verification is done into series whereby they, they did themselves. It went to the district then to the region and to the Ministry of Health. So until to pass those, uh, the four stages, it's quite, uh, we have done a lot and we are seeing the improvements comparing to uh, what we, we saw before the intervention. So the, there's a lot of changes uh, to have and these four villages, they are the first one in this district, Shinyanga district. There are no, <laughs> Open, there are no villages with open defecation free status. These are the first ones. Yeah. So there are changes. There are, are many changes in the, in the field comparing to what was before. Yeah. Congratulations. And that's amazing. Thank you. Although I don't have the data, maybe I could speak about the productivity because that is measured uh, when talking about the economic growth. It's measured uh, by the GDP, which is the gross domestic product. So that's quite big. Uh -huh. I don't have the yes, I don't have the data on the GDP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's okay though. Um, so, what are some challenges that uh, you face um, when keeping your home clean? Uh, okay, let me speak about the challenges which the the Luros face. Mm -hmm when keeping their, their home cleans. The first is first the lack of cleaning supplies. You know, most of people in the Lulu, they're in, they're in remote areas whereby they're inadequate shops, whereby they can access the cleaning supplies. So that has been a challenge to them. You know, sometimes you normally know, tell them, maybe you should, you should clean your, your latrine, clean your home, but they, they don't have the enough supplies. Uh, to keep their homes clean. So we had to tell them, maybe you can use the local available materials which you can access there in your areas. 
But the other thing is also money. You know, uh, for uh, for our case, we have uh, regional. I can say when talking about the economic growth, we have regional disparities, whereby the uh, the economy is based in the urban areas. Uh, when talking about the rural, most uh, most are living in poverty. So when telling them to buy the uh, cleaning sub materials. They and they have other priorities like maybe buying salt, buying uh, sugar, <laughs> so they don't understand and they, their income is low. So that has been a challenge to them for sure, and and we understand them. So that's why we told them to use uh, any materials which they can they can access them. What kind of materials are those? Uh, they can use the local uh, local available strong sticks. <laughs> they normally use them. I don't know them in, in they, they, they normally make the local brooms, so they mm -hmm. normally use them. And when talking about the soap, they normally use ashes, yes, mm. on washing their hands. And Is that effective? But, yes, they think it's effective. <laughs> okay. I don't know if it's scientifically proven, <laughs> but they normally <laughs> Instead of using soap, because soap is expensive and they can't, have, not every household can use the, the soap, so they normally use ashes. And the uh, district health officer has approved that. I, I think it's, it's okay for them to use. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I think I have heard like ashes uh -huh. can be used to make soap. So I guess it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Though they normally hmm. just use the the ashes they put on their hands and rub against their faces and wash their hands, yeah. Instead hmm. of using soap, yeah. I guess you use yeah. what you've got and it's better than nothing. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh, there are some households, uh, mm -hmm. even if you, you sensitize every day, they are vulnerable. They can't afford even to buy food. Mm -hmm. And uh, they under the gov the government have uh, something called the policy on social safety nets, whereby they are given uh, funds, small cash, say cash program, every month. So even if we sensitize every day, they can't change because they have no uh, money or they they have inadequate uh, funds to improve their their sanitation practices. And this also they like. Um, widowed household, uh, uh, child-headed families, yes. And what we normally do is uh, sensitizing to the community themselves to help them to help them to improve the sanitation, uh, sanitation access, sanitation uh, environmental sanitation <laughs> practice in their homes. Yeah, like helping them to construct the latrine, the bathing shelter all the things which involve construction. So we normally tell the community members to help the vulnerable households because they, by themselves, they, they can't do it. Some households are headed with the HT or very mm. old women. Yeah, they have even, they have less power even to do the construction. So that's, that's amazing. What, yes. You know, the... there are people there in the, mm. in the field, yeah, who are vulnerable. And we thought we can't construct for them because vulnerable um, vulnerable households are mushrooming every day. So if you if you construct when you leave, there will also be no sustainability. So we have to uh, convince the community members to take it as their responsibility to take care of the vulnerable households which are around their uh, their com their around their um, uh, village. Yeah. And how do you go about, I guess, convincing the household, uh, the community to look after them? Uh, this is done under the wash facilitators, the facilitators. So they normally convince the, because they, we, the first criteria, the other criteria for selecting this wash facilitator, there should be the, a person who is listened or people respect, the community respects and trusts the person. So if that person, that person speaks or convinces the villagers to help the vulnerable household, it's quite easy for them to take initiative and 
and help that household. Yeah. Mm. I really love how, yeah, you aren't just coming in and bringing people in and fixing things. You're actually involving the whole community and using, I guess, the power within the community to, you know, help everyone, not just the easiest to help people, but yeah, the vulnerable households as well. Yes, yes. Hmm. Because if you leave the vulnerable, you'll be still in the in the, you'll be still facing the the diseases. If a vulnerable practice open defecation, you'll not be safe. So mm, we ha they exactly. have to change. Yes, they have to change all of them. Yeah. So we have to include even the vulnerable households. Hmm. And then yeah. it also helps them as well, and that's great yeah. as well. Yeah. True. Um, so we've got the um, practice habit debrief section, and that's um, where we ask you something about, uh, it's where we ask you about what you do in your own home um, to maintain your sanitation. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what do you do in your own home? I've, I've just rented a, a house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not my own, my own house. So what I normally do is for the case of the latrine, I normally try my best to clean it every day after taking the shower. I normally clean it. Yeah, that's what I normally do. But on the cleanness of the, because I'm just living alone, so I don't disorganize things. <laughs> on the part of form organization, uh, I only do it only twice, twice a week, as it's mm -hmm. because I'm just alone. And I'm the one who, if I disorganize, it's me. <laughs> I have no one who can disorganize the stuff. Yeah. So I just mm. do it. Yeah. Twice, twice a week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I find that, um, my partner went away for a week, the whole week, the house was so nice and tidy. <laughs> as sure. soon as he came back, shoes in the middle of the room, coats left everywhere. Everything was disorganized again. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, that's also the challenge of home, organ home organization. Oh, yes, it's also a challenge. You asked me about the challenge, the challenge yeah. you are facing. If you are, if you are living uh, with more than two people, maybe you, if you have children or your partner, it's very difficult to, to maintain the home organization. <laughs> but if you are alone, it's quite easy to maintain because you, you try to your best to organize your stuff because uh, home organization can also help you to, it is in your task on doing the cleanness. Yeah, because when your home is disorganized, you will have to start first to organize, then to do the cleanness. Mm, yes. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. Can't, can't clean the floors until all the shoes are put away. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, so home organization is really important. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so we've also got some questions from the audience. Um, what uh, so our first question is, what causes someone to disregard the cleanli cleanliness and sanitation of the living space? So why don't people care sometimes? Uh, why do some people care less about the home organization? Mm -hmm. um, I think first it's because of the this misconception. You know, there's some misconception about the, I can say misconception about the sanitation like maybe sanitation is may expensive you know mm -hmm. there are some cases where people think that sanitation is expensive so they they tend to ignore yeah and the other thing is some people think that sanitation consumes a lot of time so they they think they are much more busy even to to ignore taking care of their living spaces or cleaning their their house households yeah so i think those are the two things which can make a person ignore sanitation while talking about about uh sanitation is expensive there are other costs they're ignoring the cost effective measures which can be used mm, that's actually sure. our second audience question which is yeah. what are some cost effective ways to improve sanitation in the home <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll just talk about the which is practical to our, to our country. I, I don't know if I'll touch uh, to uh, in your case. For instance, uh, I've already talked about that uh, because uh, most of the household they have low income, they can't afford buying soap for washing their hands, 
and they stop for yes washing their hands they normally opt to use ashes you know this mm. uh washing these uh soaps for cleaning less for washing your hands they are quite expensive so they op- they opt to use the the uh, ashes but the other thing is uh there are some household whereby they can't afford to to use the iron sheet to do the roofing so they do they normally just use the local available grasses they know how to to do it and they roof <laughs> i don't know how to do it but they they know their community members know how to do it they use grasses for for roof because you can't tell a person to to have iron sheet while even at his or a, a whole house, household has no iron sheet the the household is not roofed with the iron sheet they normally use the, they know how to do the the grasses then uh, make it as a roof and the other thing is for the case of doors we we told them to use the local available materials and use they know how to do the the uh the sticks they take the sticks and join them together <laughs> and use it as a door yeah the other thing is on the part of the drying rack mm-hmm. yes most of the rural area rural people they can't afford to buy the cupboard whereby they can put their dishes so we told them to use the drying rack just a rack it's in the compound whereby a person after washing the dishes can place his dishes there perfect so yes those are some of the cost effective <laughs> I don't know if it will be practical on your side, but it has been very helpful for our side. Yeah, I mean, I hope that, you know, we can help everyone um, with this podcast in many different uh, situations. Uh, and I'm yeah. sure that someone's listening to us today now and has learned something new that's in, that will help them, hopefully. Yeah, sure. Um, mm. And our last audience question yeah. is um, how can households best prepare for and prevent the spread of diseases or illnesses within the home? Uh, how how can they prevent the, themselves from yeah. illness? Yeah. I think it's by practicing the good sanitation and hygiene practices uh, by following the all all criteria for the health on which I, which I stayed. If you practice all of them, you mm-hmm. you you will hear just you will hear you will hear about diseases <laughs> yeah. you won't contact them because if you have the bathing shelter if you have the improved latrine you are washing your hands after using the latrine you're washing your hands before preparing food you have the rubbish pit you have the drying rack for drying your dishes clean compound and you're drinking clean and safe water you can't con- you can't uh, con- get contaminated with any kind of disease specifically the waterborne diseases which are caused by a uh, poor sanitation diseases maybe you can suffer from malaria <laughs> if you're not using the mosquito nets <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, unfortunately water sanitation won't help with malaria um yeah <laughs> See that? but uh, i guess we'll need something else for that and i guess as you said mosquito nets <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Great. Thank you for joining me today. It was um, really great to speak to you and learn a bit more about WASH. Um, so if our listeners want to find out more about you and more about your work, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me through LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm using Viva and Victor, but also they can find me through my email, personal email, which is vivianvictor94 at gmail.com. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we'll put the LinkedIn um, uh, link and we'll also yeah. put your email in our show notes. So if people do want yeah. to contact you um, for, um, you know, to learn more about you, more about your work, um, they can find you nice and easy. So thank yeah, you so sure. much for coming and talking to me today. Sure, you're welcome. It thank was nice you. to speak with you. And I thank God we have finally talked. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes. You've been listening to Room by Room, produced by the Home Organization Science Labs, a division of LMSL, the Life Management Science Labs. More episodes like this from across 10 life management perspectives can be found by searching LMSL on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube, and any other podcasting apps available on your smart devices. 
If you enjoyed this episode, please consider rating, sharing, and subscribing to our channel as it helps other people to find it so we can grow and continue to bring you quality resources. More of our work can be found on our website, ho.lmsl.net, where you can join our movement. I'm Gabriella Yastra, and thanks for tuning in.